Good morning, everyone. Or for those of you who are watching this in the evening, good evening, good afternoon. Whenever we're here by us, it's morning, and we're learning the, we're continuing on in the, uh, the Hasidic discourse, it's called the Ma'amar, of the sixth Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, that he said, one of those that he said in America in the last 10 years of his life, in this case it's 1942, and um, it talks about and that uh, there is a, a voice that goes out from heaven. <coughs> It says in Perkyovas that there's a voice that goes out from heaven and that it announces woe to mankind because of the shame of the Torah that people aren't working at the Torah. And the Rebbe said, first of all, what does it mean to work at the Torah? Learning is not enough. You have to work at the Torah. And he asks, what is this voice that comes out from heaven? So he answers the second question first. This voice that comes out from heaven, in order, and, and, but nobody hears it. No one hears this voice. So what does it go out from heaven? What is, why did God make these voices from heaven that announce woe to the creation because of the, the people aren't working at the Torah? The Torah is shamed. But this announcement comes from heaven and nobody hears it. There's other also announcements also that go out from heaven. Like it says, Shuvu banim shovavim. Shuvu, Shuvu Yisrael. Return Jews back to God. Return. But nobody hears these voices. So it's, now in order to explain what it means that these voices go out from heaven. <clears throat> so he's going to really tie the whole thing in together. First of all, the ideas of voices going out from heaven and us not hearing it. And also the idea of what is the Torah is ashamed because we don't work at the Torah. What is it? So he says, in order to understand both of these ideas, we have to understand the Jewish soul. It says on Mount Sinai that God spoke to the Jews face to face. In other words, God has a face and we have a face. This is the face that we have. It's the same face that God has. Namely, it's the Jewish soul. The Jewish soul is in the form of God. What's the form of God? God has a, of course, God does not have a form. But the form of God is, one way of looking at it is God's name. God's name is Yud and He Vav He. Another way of looking at it is called the Ten Sfirot of God. Ten aspects of God's personality. So we have, if it's hard for you to understand this idea, so you should know that you have God's personality inside of you also. What is this? Your ability, the Jews has an ability to um, recognize God, recognize God, and to understand God, and to get excited about God. And that is basically the four letters of God's name. Recognizing God, or if you want to call it believing in God, above understanding, that's the yud of God's name. And that's the part that hears these voices. The yud of God's name. Because the majority of the soul is not in the body. It's not, your personality can't take it. Your, a person's character can only understand and relate to things that it can internalize. That's relevant. And this aspect of these voices coming out, they're so powerful and so real that your personality can't take it. But the parts of your soul that are not in your personality, they can. And that's these names, letters of God's name, especially that are yud. The letter Yud is the, le the aspect of God, <coughs> of your soul, that can connect to God in a way that's totally above understanding, and totally above your personality, and totally above your ego. And that's why it's called faith, or the Rebbe, as the Rebbe uses, Bittal. That's the Yud. That's Yud. Or another name for it is Chachma. Chachma. The power of, the translated as wisdom. Well, here it doesn't use that. There is more... Bittal. Bittal means total surrender to the Creator. Something that's totally above you. <clears throat> above your uh, awareness. And this is going to be the main point of this mimer. To bring this bittal, to bring this awareness of God, how He is totally above you, that God creates you. To bring this awareness down into the world, that's going to be called the work of the Torah. You'll see. It's going to go to work. But first, so first of all, we have to bring, we said, we have to bring Chachma into Bina. Remember? That's what he said. You have to unite Chachma with Bina. Even though Chachma and Bina have separate sources. And Bina is the source of Bina understanding. 
understand is really in it higher than Chachma. But still, the main thing of Chachma is you have an, a realization of total surrender to the Creator, that God is creating you. And that God is creating you in order to serve Him. And that serving God means making the world a better place, right? getting inspiration to serve God, to serve, to serve God and to make the world the world that God wants it to be. That's why God put us here. So the, the, it all depends on this letter Yud, to bring this letter Yud down, to bring our surrender. First of all, you have to have surrender to God. You have to have belief, faith in God. It could be a totally religious person, totally religious person, right? And he does as much of the commandments as he can. He tries to be serious, right? And he tries... <coughs> And he teaches Hasidus in the morning. And he's speaking to you right now. And he believes in God. He talks about God. But when it comes to certain situations, he doesn't believe in God. He gets uptight. He gets angry. <coughs> he has desires. His eyes wander around. His ears wander around. <coughs> it could be that this person is uptight. It could be this person is angry. It could be the person is, has hatred. Right? That means times when you do not bring the oneness of God into your life. A person forgets, hey, God created me. He creates all these bugs. He creates a... God can take care of the world. Right? God can take care of the world. I don't have to do everything. But on the other hand, I have to do something. God created me to, to, to work. So I don't have to control everything. And things don't go exactly the way I want. I go berserk. I, I go crazy. Right? Things don't go the way that I want. I have to first of all check, is this what God wants? It could be, maybe, that things are happening that I don't want, but maybe this is what I need. Maybe God is right. Maybe what happens. So then you get into difficult situations. The things don't go the way you want. You don't go crazy. Right? That means bringing God, God that's above understanding, into the world. Maybe things don't have to go the way I understand. Maybe it could be that right, this is just showing me that I have to work harder. It's showing me I have to be more genuine. I have to be more friendly. A lot of times even in business, right? you go into a into a place with a smile on your face, it changes everybody's attitude. Right? Your attitude changes everything. In other words, you don't let the surrounding affect you, you affect the surrounding. If that's so in business, how much more so it is in reality? It should be. If we realize what God is, you'd be, a person should be happy or at least positive right, all the time. Right? Thinking, how can I improve the situation? How can I, right, by getting angry, by having road rage, that improves the situation? No. By being depressed, it improves the situation? No. Right? So therefore, I won't do it. I, I want to do it, but you have to know what, what God wants. Right? That's why you have to learn Torah. We'll talk about it. Okay, so we have, first of all, you have to bring this Yud into hey. You have to bring faith into understanding. Okay, Let's see, where do we get up to here? Um, we talked about, and you have to unite them, right? That's what we said. You have to have a Nikuda Behechala. We did that. We, we're up to Gimel, right? But we did that, though. We did that. Where, where did you come in? You missed one day. What did you miss? You missed this whole yes. base. You missed the whole base. Um, no, I, I, I missed up to. You, you missed part of Gimel, also? No. Uh, no, I missed base. I think we just started Gimel. I don't know. Gimel. Me and you started Gimel, yeah. but he missed something. What, what did you miss? Up to where did you miss? That's where you got up to, and you missed all the rest of this. I, I missed um, the whole rest of this paragraph. You just, missed just just uh, this much now. Oh, 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 there it is. Since we went through it, so so now I'm only missing Mikne Shorsh Okay, all right, we're starting to zero in here. What's the first word on the line? First word on the line is Hahis Rachbos. Hahis Rachbos. Up to where? I'm sorry, I just don't understand. You just show me where you are. Really. You missed like five lines. Yes. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Okay, here we go. Oh, I understand. That's not the first one. You said it. 
Okay, very good. Now we're getting in here. We're going. We're zeroing in here. Oh, attic. Oh, okay, good. Attic up to up to who in yet? Oh, good. Up, up to who? Okay, let's let's just do this a little bit. This little bit. Let's just do this little bit, okay? Attic. Okay. Let's just the first word in line is Hisrachvus. Good. Hit rachvut. It is like ten lines from the top of the page, something like that. Hit rachvut. See? Yep. Hit rachvut. Third word in. Yep. Mr. You with me, Mr. Smith? Yep. Zeo, oh, that's what it means. He's called us at the revelation of Atik. Atik, we said, is the inside of Keter. Or in the language of this mimer, it's the inside of Maskil. That this level, the inside of Maskil, or Atik, which is the top level of Keter, or in simple English, pleasure in God, is Bebina. Is in Bina, is in understanding. In other words, in some ways, understanding is higher than faith. In understanding, you have pleasure. Mipene, because Shashor Shah, that the source of Bina, the source of understanding, Bebechinet is from the level of Atik. It's from this level of Atik, the inside of Keter, or the inside of Maskil. Just different names for the same thing. Different names for the same thing. The inside of Keter, or the inside of Maskil, we said. Or the inside of, uh, of Keter is compared to pleasure in the human personality. The outside of Keter is will, willpower. The inside is pleasure. Okay, nevertheless, what are we saying? That Bina, the power of understanding, because it is wide, this indicates on its source, which its source is the ultimate wideness, which is Maskil, the source of consciousness. Lochen, therefore, he galut, the revelation of Bechinet Atik, the revelation of the level of Atik, is Bebina in Bina. So it's not exactly like the Eastern religions say that if you want to live a life of nirvana and pleasure and this, that the, where is the source? The source is, the way to do it is, just to chill out, total, right? Do nothing, oh, sit there like that, say some word over and over again, knock your personality out totally, right? Totally knock your personality, and then you'll have pleasure. It could be that there's some sort of, uh, how do you call it? Uh, there's a word for it, uh, homostasis involved. Ah, what do you think about that word? Homostasis. And there's everything is just, ooh, calm, right? That, that unfortunately, that, that, that idea, where does it come from? That idea comes from the basic uh, belief that the world is meaningless. The world is meaningless. This was the basis of Spinoza and of Freud, especially, and Adler and those people, that the world is meaningless, and the goal of man is just to have a homostasis. Right? Viktor Frankl writes a lot about this. That's why he knocks all these people down. That's not the goal of man. The goal of man is not... And that <clears throat> just to get have ultimate pleasure. What's ultimate pleasure? Doing nothing. Everything is just on a right, on a like the like the heart heart machine. Oh, he's happy now, right? Grandpa is happy now. He's in a happy place. That's not the goal of man, right? The goal of man, true pleasure, does not come from doing nothing. True pleasure does not come from wiping out your personality. That's not where it comes. No, true pleasure comes to the says, from understanding. That's true pleasure, but understanding God. Understanding the truth. Right? True pleasure comes from understanding something that's ultimately true. That's true pleasure. It's a different type of a pleasure than these guys in India get or whatever. That's, that, that pleasure that they get is total egotism. Total egotism. But egotism at a very high level. Very, very high level. But it's still a separation from God. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for me. I'm going to get it. In order to do that, you have to negate certain parts. You have to invest. <laughs> it's like business. You invest, you get something back. Right? Or those people who say... We want to go to heaven. Heaven is the ultimate pleasure, right? To, what, what's in really in heaven? Understanding. Levels of understanding. Says the Rebbe, the true pleasure can really be revealed by a person being in this world and understanding whatever he understands. Right? That's pleasure. Of course, you have to remember another thing. The goal of life is not pleasure. We're not trying to understand things in order to get pleasure. That's not the goal of life, is to get pleasure. Right? And even if, God forbid, we don't get pleasure, right, we still do what we have to That was Abraham. That's the basic of Judaism. Abraham did not take his son and sacrifice him in order to get pleasure. Right? That, that, that would be insane. There's a lot of people, there's, a, there's a, a big theory in Judaism itself 
especially in the Balchuva movement, that the whole point of life is to get pleasure. Right? Pleasure, how do you say, it is, it is not to be pursued. That's the language of, of Victor Frank also. It's not a thing to be pursued. It's the thing that ensues. Pleasure is a thing that it's a byproduct of your serving God. It's a byproduct, but it's not the goal. As soon as it becomes the goal, then you shut the whole thing off, right? Shut the whole thing off because it, it's not revealing the truth anymore. It's not revealing the truth. So it says, Atik is in Bina. True pleasure is when you understand something, you understand the truth. And that is, that there is a big advantage to Bina understanding al chachma on faith. But yesh mala, there is also an advantage of chachma of faith over being over understanding. What could it be? We just finished explaining for the last 15, 20 lines how understanding is higher. It says, but but don't don't think that it's higher in every aspect. Chachma has one big thing, and that is bitl. It has this thing of surrender, of when you say self-negation. Uh, total devotion to the cause. Shebechachma <coughs> in chachma more than bina. The chachma, that this level of chachma, namely faith, connected to what is above understanding, who is bechinas ayin. Chachma is the level of ayin, nothing. Bina is the level of yesh. Bina is a something. Alkain, therefore, Tzorich Liot, there has to be Beit Madregas. Therefore, you have to have both. Bahainu, namely, Shagam, that also, and this, now this is, the, this is going to be the theme of the Mimer, unifying Chachma with all these different lower levels. Unifying faith and awareness of the Creator with these lower levels. So there has to be gam also bihasaga in the understand in the grasping of bina of understanding. <coughs> yeah, there should be a bitl. There has to be the bitl, the negation, this surrender in your understanding. There has to be this level of surrender of chachma. And that's what I said that the man said about the Rebbe, that understanding he knows everything, right? He understands the deepest ideas. But when you talk about God, he talks about like an, like an old Jewish lady. Right? They have to have both together. Vahu, and it is, what does this mean? Period. After Chachma. Vahu, and it is, Shatiya, that there should be Hasaga, your understanding, Pit Rachvut, the understanding in the wideness of Bahasaga. Tova and a good understanding in godliness. You have to have a wide and a good, clear understanding of godliness, Kabbalah, Hasidut, as much as you can. But together with that, the yeah, there should be habitol, the, the negation, the surrender, the faith. Lo kamo, not like it is mitzada saga, not according to what you understand, ki'im, but rather. Bebechin and ayin in this level of nothingness of chachma. Vahu, and it is a chibur. This is the joining, the base madrigas of the two levels chachma and bina. Vahu, inyan, and this is the topic of nekuda behechala. The point in the palace. The point is chachma, and the palace is bina. The point in the, in the chamber, whatever. Now, this bina means every human being has an obligation to understand God, so according to some opinions, also non-Jews, and to understand God as much as humanly possible. You have an, and of course, there's no end to that. But as, together with this tremendous understanding that you should have, and this tremendous logic, and this tremendous, how do you say, uh, b- 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 building that you build for yourself and you understand that people can ask you questions, together with that, you have to have total surrender to the Creator. In other words, it means that I'm not better than anybody. I'm not better than anything. Nothing is, I don't deserve anything. Nothing is coming to me. I'm just a creation of God. I'm just a cre- God is just creating me all the time. Right? Whatever God wants to happen to me will happen to me. The future is in God's hands. 
Like the present is in my hands. That's a, a thing from the, uh, the... The present is in my hands. I have to do everything I can to understand God. Right? But what about what's going to happen? That's totally in God's hands. It's not in my hands. And what happened in the past, that was also totally in God's hands. Now that I reveal, in the past, it was all God. People, nobody did anything to me. They did things that God wanted them to do. I don't know, maybe they made mistakes, maybe they, but God wanted them to make the mistakes. Right? Whatever happened in the past, right? the past is in God's, was in God's hands. Everything that happened was exactly what was supposed to happen. The future, whatever, that's exactly what God wants to happen. Right now, it's in my hands. I have to work. I have to try to understand. I have to do it again. Good? Okay, let's go. So that's the combination. That's where you got up to, right? Yes. Yes, good. The Hine, Gimel. Hine, behold. So now we've understood the Yud of God's name in our soul, the He of God's name in our soul. Yud is this faith, surrender to God, I am nothing. He is understanding. Good, understanding God. I am something. I understand. They have to be, both of them have to be together. That's the yud and the hay. And you have to bring the yud into the hay. Now let's see the next. Hine, behold, inyan, vav, hay. What about the last two letters of God's name? How does that demonstrate itself in our personality? Hine, behold, inyan, vav, hay, of the name yud, cave of God, shebenefesh, which is in our soul. Hine, behold, kativ, it is written. Did we do this already? No, we didn't do it yet. We have, I think we have done it. Any... Huh? Two lines, okay. Hine, behold, kativ, it is written, quote, v'tzedaka, that's why we did it, yeah. V'tzedaka and charity, kanachal eitan, like the river that is powerful, of the river eitan, like a powerful river. But we had this word eitan. Do you remember we had eitan before? Do you remember we used it before? Yeah, yeah. In, the first, in the first paragraph, eitan, we said that was the level of chachma. That was the level of faith. That's the power of the Jewish soul. It comes from maskil. Perish, what is this ma nachal eitan? What is this powerful river, the nachal, the river of eitan, who is, hit pashtut, is the spreading out, bechin at the level of eitan. This is the spreading out of this level of eitan, not just into bina, like we had in the previous, in the second paragraph. What's the P uh, on the first line? Pirush, pirush, the meaning. meaning. Pirush, the meaning of, quote, Nachal Eitan, end quote. Who is Hit Pashtut, spreading out Bechin at the level of Eitan, spreading out of this level of, quote, Eitan, end quote, which we said before, Eitan means powerful, firm. Do you remember this, Mr. Smith? The shisha midos and the six emotions. And the six emotions. Vav is the six emotions. What, what, are the, what six emotions are there? Vav. So it says, God, this ten spirot of God. And so it is, it's the third chapter of the Tanya. Look, it explains that the human, that the Jewish soul is in the form of God. I mean, so is the non Jewish soul, but the Jewish soul is more in a. Uh, Jew has two souls. And one is more more revealed, a, a, a more, how do you say, a necessary connection to God. And this is the letter Yud, we said is Chachma, the letter, letter He stands for Bina, understanding. Vav, the, the, Vav is a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and every letter of the Hebrew alphabet has a numerical value to it. Aleph is one, the first letter of the alphabet is number one, the second is two. Vav is six. The, gema, the gematria, the, the, the numerical value of Vav is six. And that stands for the six emotions, the six emotional traits of God. What are the six emotional traits of God? Chesed, Gavura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. Right? Chesed is love, kindness. Gavura is severity, strictness. Tiferes is balance, purpose, beauty. Balance. Purpose, right? A goal. Uh, sometimes it's also called mercy. Mercy. It's in the middle. Then you have netzach, is how these things are given over. Netzach is victory, overcoming all obstacles. Nothing will, nothing will stop me from loving, from having mercy, from having, being severe with this, but nothing will stop me. Netzach, overpowering. Hod, 
means surrender. Surrender. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. The, the, the ability for a person to, to say, to stop. Hold. Yesod means connection. Connection. Interest. You're interested in a person. That's, that's the sixth emotions. And then the last hey, that's vav. That's vav. Then the last hey, that's malchus. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, so first of all, we have vav. Vav, it says that charity is kanachal eitan. Perish, nachal eitan was a powerful river. This is the, the river flows, right? It flows from one place to another. This is talking about hait pashtut, the flow, the movement, bechinet eitan, of this level of eitan. We said that that's the power of chachma, the power of surrender to God. Beshisha midot, in the six emotions, Sheyihiyeh, that there should be by him and them, that there should be in the emotions, Gamkein also, Habitel, the surrender of Chachma. That the six emotions should also have this level of the surrender, this level of faith or connection to what's above understanding, just like in Chachma. And that's what I was talking about before. I, I sort of jumped, jumped the gun a little bit. Before, he was talking about bringing Chachma into Bina. Bringing Chachma into Bina means that you understand, and you understand you're a great professor, you understand everything, you're a great rabbi, and you're a genius, but at the same time, you're totally connected to God. And that affects your understanding. So your understanding doesn't go swaying around. Here they have, for instance, in Israel, there's big rabbis. Right? But when it comes to a personal thing, like let's say making money for your yeshiva, or for your cause, your group, so they're willing to, all of a sudden, they're not so negated to God. All of a sudden, they don't, right? There's a, a basic principle of Judaism is that money comes from God. It's a very basic principle of Judaism, that money comes from God. You have to work, you have to work, but you should know that the money comes from God. That's the, the trick of the spies, why they didn't want to come to the land of Israel. Because when they were in the desert, everything came from God. Water came from God, bread came from God, everything came from God. When they went to Israel, they would have to work on their own. They would have to work. They would have to plow. And even then they would have to believe that everything came from God. That's hard. Right? It's hard that you do all the work and God gets all the credit. Right? Uh, not nice. Right? You do all the work, God, why should I do that? You know what? I'll stay in the desert. I'll give God all the credit. I want to give God all the credit. But I, why should I you know, mix myself into it? Right? A basic principle of Judaism is that we have to do all the work. That's why God got angry. They didn't come to the land of Israel. That we have to do the work and God gets all the credit. And then afterwards we realized that it wasn't really we did all the work. That really we did 1% of the work. And that God gave 99%. And then when you think about it, we didn't even do 1%. Because who's creating me? God. And who gives me the ability to work? God. And who gives me life? God. Who creates my body? God. Right? So really God was doing the whole thing. It's just that what? I had free will. I could have done or not. So therefore I'm considered to be a partner. Therefore, I'm considered to be a partner with God. Because I have free will, I could choose to do or not. But really, God's doing the whole business. But it doesn't seem that way. When I work, I'm doing it all. I have to call the shots. I have the problems. Right? I have the difficulties. I get the disappointments. And then I have to say everything goes to the guy. Not nice. So that's what it means. You have to bring chachma into bina. You have to bring this total bittle into of the, the God into your understanding. You have to start understanding things a little bit differently. right? So that your understanding doesn't bring you to the wrong conclusions. And that's why you see there's people, very religious, ultra-Orthodox, and they're in the government, and in front of everybody, in front of the whole thing, right? They're willing to, to, to say laws that aren't according to the Torah, but they're genius people, so they can find all sorts of ways to explain it. It says that the people that used to sit in the Sanhedrin, they could give you 150 reasons why a spider is kosher to eat. 150 reasons. It's obvious a spider is not permissible to eat. Right? It's obvious. They could bring up 150 logical reasons why it's okay. Right? Of course, all those reasons would be twisted. They're twisted reasons. They're, they're understanding, great. But it wouldn't be understanding that was connected to negation to Hashem. Right? It could be that after all, there were, there were people, I remember, never forget, I was in B'nai Brak for four years. I think I said this. There's a whole big group of, of people in, in, in B'nai Brak, especially, that made it their goal to hate Lubavitcher Rebbe. They hate him. Oh, they hate Chabad. They won't go into a Chabad synagogue. They won't talk to a Chabad person. 
So I was there for four years, and I asked them why. Nobody had any reason. Finally, the only reason was because Chabad is different. Well, because Chabad is different, therefore you can hate them. Listen, we're right. Anybody who's not like us is wrong. Right? That's the obvious thing. So it comes out that what the, tremendous understanding. Their whole life is just sitting and learning Torah. Right? But when all of a sudden comes a thing like this, that somebody gets on my nerves. I don't like the person. I, I this is like Yosef and his brothers. I don't like him. Uh, right? So all of a sudden, the Chachma goes away. That's why you have to have Chachma in Bina. Chachma has to be in the understanding. Your understanding always has to be negated to the Creator. What does the Creator want? Let's look in the books. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's look in the books. Right? You check yourself. Chachma, like he says, is ayin, is bitl. I'm willing to negate myself. Bina is yesh. Uh, both here. That's okay. Now, that we talked about in the second paragraph. Now we're talking about bringing Chachma into the emotions. Now we're talking about bringing the same bitl into your emotions. What I love, what I've... Oh, now this is a little bit more difficult. This is a little, little bit more difficult. Why? Because understanding... Here the whole Torah is understanding. So you can look and you see, here look, one second, there's an argument between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel. You know who Beit Shammai was. You have any idea? The holiness, the, the power of understanding. And the law is not like Beit Shammai. So it could be, maybe the law is not like me. Could be, right? So a person looks, he sees, he learns the Torah all the time. He knows... To bring Chachman to Bina means you want the truth all the time in your intellect. That's not so easy, but on the other hand, it's not as hard as bringing the truth into your emotions. When you have emotions about something, whoo, that's me, right? You get, it's automatic, automatic enthusiasm. You didn't have to think about, it. that's, my ego is really there, like road rage. You know, you know, wow. Now to bring God into that, that's not so easy. That first of all, God has to come into your understanding, and then you have to explain something to your emotions to get them to stop. Like in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, and as I took a big course on this, Alcoholics Anonymous, right? The whole thing is they have to keep telling themselves that what I want is not right. I have to call on a higher power, help me get me out of here, because if I do what I want, what I feel, if I follow my urges, I'm going to get into trouble, right? So it's, but it's, it's a very difficult and a very long process to do this. Nevertheless, that's our goal. That's, what this, that's, that's the vav of the godly soul. The vav of the godly soul is godliness coming into your emotions. So it says, this is the ispashtas, this is the spreading out of the level of Eitan, Beshisha, Midos, and the six emotions. Sheyiyah, that there will be Bahem, and them, Gamkein, also, the bitl, the surrender, or the negation to God like it is in Chachma. Period. Vayinyan, the explanation, who is? Tehine, that behold. Midos, emotions. Hanoldos, that are born. Mid, from your.